So I've been using this newly released keyboard for the past couple of weeks now, and I've got to say this is the nicest keyboard I've ever owned. Now, as you may or may not be able to tell, I'm by no means a professional reviewer, nor do I claim to know a whole bunch about keyboards. But I do know what being a student is like, and I do know what type of review I'd like to watch if I was in the market for something like this. This video will be an easy to understand, honest review of the new Tinker 65 by Ducky in their project D-Line. I'll first start off with the disclaimer that Ducky did very kindly send this out to me for review, but they are not sponsoring this video, nor have they influenced any of my thoughts. For some background information, and if you're new to the channel, then welcome. My name's Jaden, and I'm just an ordinary dental student studying at university. For my whole life, I've never really invested much money into keyboards, because I thought that they were all the same, and it's honestly something that I've never been interested in. You see, I always used to do work and type on either my laptop or some normal low-profile keyboard, such as this one from Amazon, and they always used to do the job just fine. But one day, I stumbled across a few YouTube videos comparing different keyboards and learned how they all had a unique typing sound, which is just super satisfying and I could listen to it all day. I was very lucky and it seemed like the perfect time because the renowned brand Ducky had a new release plan and I was super excited to add a new friend to my workflow. This is the Project D Tinker 65. If you don't know, Project D is a brand under Ducky that focuses on creating a premium typing experience. And the 65 part of the name is because it's a 65% keyboard and from my understanding it's basically a keyboard without all the function keys at the top and without the big number pad you often see on full size keyboards. For all you keyboard enthusiasts, here are the specs and features. I have no idea what any of these mean. It's gasket mounted with south facing RGB LED, five pin hot swappable with QMK VIA supported software. It has PCB stabilizers and has PBT double shot OEM profile keycaps. Hopefully some of that would have meant something important to a few of you, but to me it's pretty much a nice looking and even nicer sounding keyboard. And there will be a full sound and typing test at the end of the video where you can hear it for yourself. If you first glance at the keyboard, you immediately get a strong appreciation for the minimalistic design which has this strange sense of formality and elegance to it. The clean and uncluttered aesthetics of this sort of matte black keyboard not only creates a visually pleasing workspace, but also brings a sense of focus. I mean, look at it on my desk. It matches the simple colour scheme very well, and when you picture yourself sitting here, you imagine being productive, which is exactly what I'm looking for as a student who spends countless hours at their desk. The build quality is another important aspect to touch on, as it's quite a chunky but sturdy keyboard. It's obviously made to last a very long time, as it's a keyboard after all, but it genuinely feels premium and expensive, even though the outside is made of plastic. There are adjustable height options made possible by the stands on the back, and the keys are hot swappable, meaning that you can remove them and replace them if you have any others, but unfortunately I don't. I use a MacBook, and even though the keys are more aimed at Windows, you are still able to use full functionality as the Windows key essentially replaces the command key, and instead of an option, you have an alt. This is something I've become very used to because my previous keyboards have also had the same layout and I've never had any issues. Now an important point you have to take note of is that it is a wired keyboard and doesn't come wireless. It connects to your PC via a USB to USB-C braided cable. Personally, I don't mind the wire because number one, that means I can have the RGB on all the time and not worry about having to charge the keyboard. I'll show you all the colorful RGB options later. And number two, there is no input delay via Bluetooth or anything, so for typing and gaming, you'll be completely satisfied with that. Also, a really quick note about the cable. I really appreciated the fact that the cable came with the small plastic protection on the ends of it, as well as the red inner lining inside the connection points. Even though it is a very minute detail, I think it makes you as the buyer feel very appreciated and reassures you that your money has been put to good use. Overall, I really like the design and I feel like all of these little details help to add to the general experience. Something I haven't mentioned yet and probably my favorite aspect of the keyboard is the sound. I'll be doing a comprehensive test at the end of the video so you can soak in everything before you get to the most satisfying part. Okay, so next let's talk about the fancy lights. So if we make it dark, hopefully you'll still be able to see the keyboard, although I'd like to upgrade my camera lens soon as it's not currently the best in low light. As I've already stated, this is a wired keyboard, so I keep the RGB on constantly, but you can turn it off by pressing function and R. This is currently my favorite light setting at the moment, but there are really so many to choose from and there's multiple ways of changing the intensity and speed of the effects you're looking at. The RGB is also south facing, so I guess that means it's pointed in the direction of the user. And as you can see, when viewing from different angles, the RGB is a lot less visible, but that doesn't affect me at all because I always sit face onto my keyboard. Let's just take a few moments to appreciate the variety of the lighting options.
you know what, if you're interested in learning more about this technical side of the keyboards, as well as how the RGB lighting works, there are fantastic science and engineering courses available over at brilliant.org who are kindly sponsoring this video. They take you through the basic principles of when we use real life science and guides you through the super interactive and fun problems along the way, which actually makes learning interesting. For example, in the How Tech Works course, you can explore topics like how electrical circuits actually work, what makes a password actually strong, and even understand how our phones know our precise location. In today's world, you'll see so many huge improvements in technology. It's basically inevitable that our futures will consist of learning how to use it. By starting at the fundamentals and building a solid foundation, you'll be able to look at things around you and have a better idea about how our world is changing. You never know, maybe this could be the start of your new career. Maybe you could solve a problem that would impact generations to come. Now, if this sounds interesting to you, you can try Brilliant free for a full 30 days by visiting brilliant.org slash jadenyi or clicking the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual subscription. Thank you very much, Brilliant, for sponsoring this video. So now let's move on to arguably the most important factor when deciding to buy anything, and that is the price. At the time of this video, you can buy this keyboard for about $109 or about £90 for my UK audience. My old keyboard here costed roughly £20, so obviously there is a somewhat significant difference in price, but is it worth it? Well, let's talk about it in the eyes of a student like myself. Although they both do the exact same job, the Tinker 65 definitely has some advantages that I've noticed from only using it for a couple of weeks. I always say to spend your money where you want to spend your time. And in the case of our daily lives, most of us are online and typing now more than ever as everything is slowly becoming digital. We spend countless hours at our desk and so my justification is that since I spend more time here than anywhere else, I might as well invest some money into improving my quality of life spent here. To be honest, just the feel of typing on this keyboard alone sells it for me. Every time you press a key, you get a satisfying clicky sound. And I don't know how to describe it, but it just physically feels really nice. Because of this, it sort of influences me to type more and it encourages me to be productive, which is something that sounds a bit crazy since I would never have even thought of that before experiencing it for myself. The decision of price and whether it's worth it or not is a decision that's completely made by you. And if you're satisfied with what you're currently using, then you should keep it. So now let's move on to what you've all been waiting for, which is the sound test. So who should buy this keyboard? Well, I think asking yourself a few questions can help you make a good decision. Number one is why do you want this keyboard? Are you looking for aesthetics, RGB lighting, the sound of typing? Number two is do you have a keyboard that already works and that you're happy with? And if you do, what will the Tinker 65 do that your current one doesn't? Will it make you more productive? Will it motivate you to study more? Will it make you more happy? Number three is are you in the financial position that makes spending $110 worth it for you? Could you do anything else with that money that will benefit you more? Are there any other keyboards around this price point that you've been looking at. I'd really recommend researching as many as you can and then finding your favorite from that. But overall, my final opinion on the Project D Tinker 65 is that I absolutely love it. Even using it to plan out this video has made the whole process a lot more enjoyable. And the simple fact that it improves my quality of life sells it for me. Please remember that everything I've mentioned is only from my personal experience. I am not a professional keyboard reviewer, but this video was made mainly for students in the eyes of a student. If you have any questions, then leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed and want more tech related content. Thank you so very much for watching.